Instant match reaction, Everton 1, Aston Villa 2 at Goodison Park. Absolutely embarrassing, to be honest. Absolutely embarrassing. That was the worst defensive performance Everton have put in all season, bar none. I don't care what anybody says, it was absolutely shocking. From minute 1 to minute 90, it was like we may as well have played without a defence. How much space we gave Ollie Watkins and Traore in that Aston Villa attack. How much time we give them on the ball to get forward and to create opportunities. It was just... An absolute joke, to be honest with you. And you know what? I'm, I don't even want to talk about Europe. I don't even want to think about Europe because we don't deserve Europe. Even whether we finish in there or not come the end of the season, we don't deserve it. Performances like that show that we're not good enough to play in Europe. We'll get bounced left, right and centre, no matter who we play. Doesn't matter whether we play some of the best teams in Germany and France and Spain or whether we play a team from Prague or Hungary or Iceland. It doesn't matter who we play. We will get bounced from pillar to post in every single European game because this team isn't good enough to play in Europe and it showed that today it absolutely showed that today Aston Villa are a decent Premier League side a decent Premier League side we made Ross Barkley look like fucking cacker we made Ollie Watkins look like Harry Kane he's a decent striker but he had Mason Holgate and Ben Goffrey all over the place for 90 minutes it was dreadful absolutely dreadful and you know what if it wasn't for Jordan Pickford today that would have probably been about 4-5 maybe even 6-1 to where to Aston Villa, Jordan Pickford makes two, three, four absolutely unbelievable saves to keep that game at what was one nil and one all at the time, and then we go and throw it away in the last ten minutes again. A simple ball, and and you leave a player who you know has got the ability to kill a, a shot in like that on the edge of the box on his own. I mean. We, there was talk about Aston Villa being on the beach before this game. There was talk about Aston Villa not really having much to play for and, and not really, you know, having anything to, to fight for between now and the end of the season. And have they been on the beach in recent weeks with their results? On the, if, that, if that Aston Villa team are on the beach, then Everton are bloody, I don't know, Everton are in the sea, mate, drowning about 40 mile out. It was shocking, absolutely shocking. Again, like I said, defensively, we were abysmal and it all started from the off, really. I mean... It doesn't get much more Everton than, you know, looking at the, the Everton app before the game and listening to BT Sport and hearing that James Rodriguez has done his calf in the warm-up and he's going to be replaced by Alex Awobi. And then you sort of knew from that point on it wasn't going to be an exciting night. And, you know, I think Everton had the first attack of the game. We, we come forward, we brought the ball forward. We looked like we were cool and calm on the ball. And then Mason Olgate gets away with one indecisive, can't find his pass, turns and, and barely gets it to Ben Godfrey. And then about two minutes later... The simplest ball to Luca Dean. He, he literally, it was on for about five minutes. He doesn't want to play it. He tries to turn. He tries to be cocky. He plays himself into trouble. Ollie Watkins comes, bounces him off the ball and slots it past Jordan Pickford. And it's 1-0. And from that point on, really, defensively, we, like I said, we may as well not have played with the defence. Other than maybe Seamus Coleman, who had a relatively decent game. The other three, Dean, um, Holgate and, and Goffrey were, were poor today. Absolutely poor. I think I've bloody cursed Ben Goffrey because I turned around yesterday and said that I've never seen Ben Goffrey have a bad game for Everton. He really wasn't great today. He wasn't as bad as Mason Holgate, but he really wasn't great. Um, again, like I said, Ollie Watkins had the pair of them, had the pair of them on strings for, for 90 minutes. And it's so... I don't know what's more frustrating watching that performance and having to come and talk about that performance and us all watching and witnessing that or the the fact that when nobody is surprised by that. I don't know what's more frustrating, that performance or the fact that none of us are surprised by that performance whatsoever. Another game at home against a team. If we'd have won today, we'd have gone into the top six. We'd have gone above Liverpool. We'd have gone you know, right next to those teams like your West Ham's and your Chelsea's, etc. But again... Not only have we thrown a win, we've come, we've come out of it with nothing against, OK, a good Aston Villa side, but that Aston Villa side who everyone was saying had nothing to play for and was on the beach. Like I said, if they're on the beach, then Jesus Christ, we must be in bloody, we must be in quicksand sinking because that was utterly abysmal. It was like we were what, we were on the beach. It's like we had nothing to play for. It's like we were mid-table with no real fight for Europe with the last few games of the season and these players are thinking, oh yeah, it doesn't matter because we'll be on a plane in a couple of weeks' time on our holidays. Like I said, with the exception of Jordan Pickford, it, it, everyone else was just was just poor. I mean, Dominic Calvert Lewin, fair play to Dom, gets his gets his goal. Yeah, I said we were talking about how much he needed the goal, gets his goal back post. It's a good ball in, and it's a good header to be fair. But again, the attackers, Richarlison in the second half, three, four, five chipped balls over to Richarlison. 
absolutely squanders every single opportunity. I get that the difficult chances, I get that you have to take them down and sometimes you have to hit them on the volley and the front tight angles, I get that. But how many opportunities does he want in and around the six yard box to miss? You know, we had one in the, uh, I think it was early on in the second half where he's running and Gilfie Sigurdsson's got mounds of space on that left hand side and he tries to get it through to Dominic Calvert-Lewin, you know, about 20 minutes after Dominic Calvert-Lewin's been tracked back by a defender. Um, Josh King had a chance in the last minute. It's, it's, listen, it's very, very clear. If Carlo Ancelotti can watch that for 87 minutes before bringing Josh King on, it's very clear Josh King isn't going to be an Everton playing in the summer. It's very clear Carlo Ancelotti doesn't think Josh King's good enough. And I've sat here and I've said it before, time and time and time again, these Everton midfielders, your Gomez, your Sigurdsson, your Awobis, you know, even your Alan to an extent, good footballs on the ball, Awobi on the ball at times today, his passion was all right, he, he was, his skill was all right, he was getting himself out of dangerous situations, but off the ball, the lad, I'm sorry, but the lad hasn't got a football and brain, he has not got a football, the movement is just non-existent, and you can't have players for as good as they might be on the ball, for as good as they might be with the, getting themselves out of dangerous situations, you can't have players that, when the opposition has got the ball, they all just stand round and go, right, well, we're not, you know, we don't have to do anything now because the opposition have got the ball. Aston Villa, exactly like Brighton did two weeks ago, exactly like Palace did three weeks ago, exactly like Chelsea did, exactly like the majority of teams that have come to Goodison Park, Chelsea went to Goodison Park, but like the uh, majority of teams that have come to Goodison Park this season, they found it far too easy to just walk past us, walk past us, no tracking, no real movement, no one really getting back, no real effort, I mean like I said, the Wobie on the ball is decent, but it's like it's like when you play FIFA and he's got the ball and he passes it off and then somebody else picks it up and he just stops. He doesn't continue his run, doesn't move himself into space, doesn't get beyond the defender, just stops. Um, his final ball as well is, is dreadful. His passing is all right, but his final ball was shocking. Even Sigurdsson, who was probably one of the best players on the pitch in an Everton shirt, didn't really do much, did he? I mean, he had a, a couple of opportunities where he had a bit of space and he ruined it, he, you know, sorry, he wasted it. Um... Gomez again, him on the ball, couple of nice passes, but movement wise, Maston Villa just walk through. I mean, Ross Barkley, this is a lad who bloody the, uh, Dean Smith, Aston Villa's manager, has very literally come out in two, the last two weeks and said, Yeah, we're not going to sign Ross Barkley. He was on the pitch today and he, he was walking past everybody. He, he, Ross Barkley was doing what Ross Barkley was doing at Everton five years ago, walking past everybody and taking shots. He hit the post. You know, El Ghazi at the bar earlier on in the game. Like I said, if it's not for Jordan Pickford, that's four, five, six, one. That's an utter embarrassment. That's why I'm saying it's the worst defensive performance of the season because we've made a mid-table Aston Villa team. They could have walked away five goals to one today with a, a comfortable victory if it wasn't for Jordan making some real big, big saves. It was um, it was embarrassing. And, and yes, Carlo has to take some of the blame. To, to be honest, Carlo has to take some of the blame for the pure fact that he watched the opening 15 minutes of that game and didn't make a substitution. 15 minutes in, Mason Allgate should have been dragged off that pitch and Yeri Mina should have been put on. I don't care how it's, oh, you can't do that because it's again, you know, it, it might, um, you know, the player might not like it or it, it says that, you know, the player's not having a good game. You do what you've got to do to win. And I'm not saying if he'd have put Yeri Mina on that pitch 15 minutes in, Everton had gone and won that game, but we'd have been a lot stronger defensively and we'd have been a lot calmer defensively for the rest of it, for the majority of it, and would. You know, El Ghazi, who's, again, technically one of Aston Villa's best players, would he be standing on the edge of the box with all of the time in the world to kill a shot in? And also, why don't we have a player like that, by the way? Why haven't we got a player who shifts the ball onto a strong foot on the edge of the box and curls the ball around it? I think we had, I think Awobi had a chance, uh, a shot outside the box. Alan had a shot outside the box. I think Richarlison had a shot. Dominic Calvert-Lewin had a shot outside the box. And every single one of them was like watching... 50 year old men who, who don't play football and have turned up on a five side on a Wednesday night and have just got the ball on the edge and thought, fucking, I'm having a shot here. A Wobie's landed in my back garden. Dominic Calvert Lewin's hitting the ball with the with the outside of his foot when he's going he's going away from goal. Curling in with the inside of your foot. Alan's shot goes wide. Richarlison's shots are going wide. Why don't we have a player who can just put his foot on the ball and curl it round? Do what El Ghazi done. Because Jordan Pickford couldn't do anything about the goal. And most goalkeepers wouldn't do anything about that goal. Defensively, he should have been closed down. We basically stood there and went, go on, have a go. But why don't we have a player who can do that on the other end? Every time we get the ball on the edge of the box, bloody hell, it's like it's anywhere but the back of the net. It was just it was just shocking again. And, and it look, 
it's frustrating, it's annoying, it's upsetting, but like I said, the worst, worst feeling about it is it's predictable. It's so, so evident, and this is what we all talk about when we say we've evident it, it's evident, it's typical Everton, and I know that Carlo Ancelotti has done a lot of work since he's come into Everton Football Club to eradicate that sort of feeling and that sort of mentality, and I get that the Derby win absolutely eradicated that mentality, the Arsenal win just last week eradicated that mentality, but it's, it's nights like today, where we've turned up, we're Aston Villa decent, yeah, they were good, they come at us, was it like watching uh, the best team in the world, no, we had Ollie, Ollie Watkins run the show with awful defending, we let the midfield run through us, because we, there's about as much movement as your bowels after you've had a bloody, one of them tablets that makes you constipated and you can't shit, I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head, um, and like I said, going forward, we're missing chance after chance after chance, it's just, it's just shocking. It, it, to be honest, it, it's it's shocking, but it's predictable. And like I said, you know, we all sit here and say, "Oh, Everton, that that that's an Everton, that's an Everton type of performance." I've said I said that a few weeks ago. I don't want to play a Goodison again this season. I really, really don't want to play a Goodison again. The only the only time I will accept being happy playing a Goodison this season is in that Wolves game when there'll hopefully be fans back in the stadium and hopefully a few thousand of us will be able to go and watch Everton Football Club live in the flesh for the first time in over a year. So that's the only time I want to play at Goodison between now and the end of the season because the reality of the situation is we are abysmal at home. Absolutely abysmal. And that was embarrassing. It was abysmal. The, the defending was like watching Sunday League defending and not even Sunday League defending at a high standard. Bad, bad Sunday League defending. Just, again, decision-making, poor. What's Mason Allgate doing? I watched the replay and the, the pass to Luca Dean is literally on and he turns he turns around and falls on his ass. and Ollie Watkins has got the easiest finish of his career. Like I said, if it's not for Jordan Pickford, that's probably 4-5-1 or five, one, and we've walked away getting spanked by, by Aston Villa who, who apparently are on the beach with nothing to play for. Are they a decent Premier League side? Yeah, they're a decent side. They've got some quality players as shown today, but they're not... They're not, you know, it's not like we're, we've been beaten by Man City in that form or Chelsea or in that form or Man United. You know, come on, we've been beaten by a team. Not, no disrespect to Aston Villa, and I like Aston Villa as a club. I do. I think they're a top club, um, very historical club. But Everton have to do better than that, and that's why I'm not even entertaining the, the discussion for Europe anymore. I don't care, honestly. To be honest, I've gotten to that point, and this is where Everton has gotten me to, and I'm sure a lot of you are the same. I don't care anymore. I really don't care about this season. If you had to say to me, Cam, you're finishing Europe now, I'd go, sand. If you had to say to me, Cam, you won't finish in Europe now, I'd go, sand. Because that's what these type of results do to you. That's what the Fulham at home, that's what the Burnley at home, that's what the Brighton away two weeks ago, that's what the Palace at home two weeks ago, that's what the Newcastle away at home, that's what a, co a combination of all of those results gets you to a point where you just go, I'm not bothered anymore. I really, really don't care anymore. I'll watch every week. I'll come on and I'll do streams and I'll do videos and I'll talk about the club and what's happening in the games every week. But I don't care. Like I said before the game, I don't care how we win it. Go out and win it. Um, we've lost it. Playing absolutely dreadfully. So, yeah. Europe. Will we finish in there? Won't we finish in there? I'm not really asked. I just want this season over and done with because it's very, very clear that this team needs a lot of investment and a lot of quality bringing into it. Because the current side, the current squad isn't good enough whatsoever it really really isn't so not bothered about the rest of the season finish in Europe boss don't finish in Europe boss whatever get us to the summer transfer market and let's go and sign some serious serious players that turn up in games like this and, and show their quality against good Premier League sides and you know ultimately that, that how can we any of us argue that we're anything more than a mid-table team at the moment when when we when we turn up like that, yeah, we beat Arsenal last week. Brilliant, boss. Great historical. Absolutely amazing. But we all knew it meant nothing if we were to lose today or if we weren't to win today. And that's exactly what happened. It, our Everton's inconsistency makes us a mid-table team. That's that's it. Um, our inconsistency is the reason as to why we're a mid-table team because we can't go, we can't string. And we did at the start of the season, and this is why I don't get it. At times this season, we've strung two, three, four wins together. Now it's a win, a draw, a loss, a loss, a win, a draw. And, it, and it, it's at the business end of the season where you can't really... Have, I'd rather have this form at the start of the season and at the start of the season form now where we're winning constantly every week and we're performing really well. Instead, we're defending like you've just given a pair of boots to a random fella on the street and the attackers can't hit a barn door with a banjo other than Dom's header, which was a decent header to be fair, but Ross Barkley absolutely left them on his own. So there you go, look. 
that's my instant match reaction leave your thoughts in the comment section down below we'll be off twitter and instagram and social media of course still doing the social media blackout so we won't be on social media but obviously we're still doing the video play ratings will be up shortly as well so check that one out and um, yeah don't forget to check out the football news this is five app as well down in the description let us know your thoughts um and yeah abysmal and like i said i don't care now between the end of the season i just i'm the emotion is just i, I don't i'm not bothered and that's what Everton does to you in these games. I'm not bothered. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you soon.